Istanbul, Turkey, and we're here to eat. This Istanbul Food Series is all about sharing with you the city's best food. Istanbul's food culture is vibrant, delicious, and steeped in history. This is our third video from Istanbul, and we're here to hunt down the best local food. Watch out for nose to tail eating, traditional Turkish food, and a meze feast. In this four-part series, we'll show you the city's tastiest food, from hole-in-the-wall restaurants to unusual Turkish street food. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. A bunch of really interesting and hopefully delicious Turkish food in store for you today. We're super excited about this video and what we're going to eat. So, Turkey's uh, cuisine is super regional, but what is great about Istanbul is that you can try all of these regional specialties because there are so many people in this city and they've brought their food with them to the big city and they're often amazing versions of these dishes. Our first stop is for a thing called tantuni. It is a wrap that's filled with uh, diced beef and it is stuffed into a wrap and it's from the south of Turkey from a city called Mersin. We've got our tantuni in front of us and this looks really good. I am starving this morning so I am excited to get into it. So we ordered two types. This is um, I suppose the non-traditional one. It's served in a bread roll, half a bread roll and we've got the diced beef. We've got some tomatoes, some parsley and some onions which I think are covered in sumac and the bread. Check it out. It is soaking in all of that um, juice that were, the beef was cooking in. So he was uh, moving the beef around on that hot plate or that rather unique cooking surface. So it's a, it's a round um, hot plate and then there's a well in the middle and he just sort of pushes the beef in and out and he threw some chili uh, powder over the top and so it's created this sort of saucy chili goodness and he pressed the bread into that sauce so it just sort of soaked up all of those juices, the meat juices, so I think it's going to taste real good. And then this here is the traditional tantuni, so it's served in a lavash which is this really really thin flat bread, same um, things inside, so the diced beef, the parsley, the tomato and the onions. And then to go with it all, we've got a plate of lemon wedges and also some of these delicious pickled chilies, which really um, add a bit of tang and heat to your meal. These are very common wherever you eat in Turkey. You'll often get a plate of these chili peppers. Okay, I think I'm going to start with the trad. So the tantuni, which is uh, wrapped in more durum style, so a roll style in a lavash. Okay. Mmm, mmm, that is really good. I think the overwhelming flavour is that of the beef. There isn't a um, too strong of a chilli kick, so it's not really spicy at all. Just a tiny tingle. But the beef is so juicy, full of flavour. What I love about Turkish food is that it's very simple. So you can really taste the parsley, you can taste the sumac on the onions. Sumac is um, the dried berries from sumac bush. They crush them up and they taste sort of lemony and tangy. You can really taste that in here. And the tomatoes just add a fresh burst um, of flavour. What I'm going to do is just grab some of these lemon wedges. Because they're sitting here, I reckon the thing to do is just squeeze that into the tantuni and then I might just have a pickled chili on hand and go bite bite. Mmm. 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 
I am loving it with that pickled chili. Quite spicy this one. Very, very tangy, sour, vinegary. And then added to that beef, it's just like the perfect combination. This is very good. Wow, look at that wrap. Okay, let's get into this roll style. Look how soft the bread is. It's so, so pillowy. All right. Oh, looks good. Mm. Mm. That is some chewy, chewy bread. You know why? I think it's because it's been sitting for a bit while we were getting our shots. It's quite chewy. It's got a ton of flavour though. So very, very chewy. But because um, he soaked up all of that meat juice into the bread, it's just got spice, it's got flavour, it's really delicious. Mm. I feel like maybe the bread overwhelms this version of the tangerine. In the wrap, you can really taste the meat. Next up, we're having a dish that we've seen around a lot during our two month stay in Istanbul, but we've never managed to have it yet and I'm super excited about this one. It's called Kalatanda and it's a um, roasted whole sheep's head. So in the last video, you would have seen that we had a boiled sheep's head and it was absolutely incredible. So this has got a very high bar to pass to be as good as that, but I can't wait to try this one. right outside a butcher's shop and we've got all of the calatanda, the roasted sheep's head, in the um, in this little glass box, they're steaming away. But Abi is just cutting it up now, he's just cracked open the head, taken out, this is the brain here, the brain, and then um, all cheek. sorts of bits, cheek, and then is this the dill, the tongue Abby? Tongue. The tongue? Oh, the smell is incredible. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> Chili? Pepper. Look like that, you shake it there, honey. Cannot wait to get into this. So many gorgeous looking bits. You shake it there, honey. So. Abby's just given us two forks. We've got the brains here. There's the fat behind the eyes. And what he did was he finished it off with a sprinkling of salt, some oregano, and some chili flakes. <laughs> this is a super unique dish. I love that for one, we're sitting in a butcher's shop to eat it. So literally a butcher's shop, all the raw meat is right here beside us but the dish itself is super unique so you order an entire sheep's head which they have sitting there hot in the cabinet they take out the head and then he very meticulously breaks it down so he starts by um, hacking the back of the skull off so he can lift the brain out whole and then he just slowly breaks it all down so he's breaking out the pulls out the eye breaks off the back bit of the eye that you can eat breaks the jaw off it's really interesting to watch it done and it did take quite a long time it was maybe a four or five minute process to break it all down in a really orderly fashion and so now because it's all been broken down perfectly we have this plate of all the different bits so there's cheeks in here there's um, bits of tongue there's bits of the back of the eye somewhere hiding just here I think we've got some big bits of brain here so I think let's start with a bit of brain so the brain looks super crazy Creamy. It's really um, soft and covered in a lot of the chili and the dried oregano. Mm. 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 My god, that is creamy. Oh, 
really good flavor. It's been really well seasoned. So it's got a beautiful saltiness and pepperiness, but it also has got that chili, which works perfectly with it. It's a unique flavor. It does taste a little like lamb, but it's um, a little bit more harsh on the tongue, but not in a bad way. That is really good. Let's just try a little bit of just the general sort of, I think it's probably a piece of cheek, so just a beautiful, and it, it, it's unbelievably soft. Whoa. Mm. Oh, the flavor of that. The meat to fat ratio is perfect, and the fat is so juicy. It's really, really good. Now let's go for a bit of this eye. So this is off the back of the eye. It's the fat off the, basically I think that holds the eye into place, the little layer of fat around the back of the eye. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, really beautiful flavor. Um, the fat itself, I thought it was going to be super squishy and juicy, but actually the little stem um, part of the fat was um, had a little bit of bite. It, it felt texturally like fat that had um, congealed and gone hard, but it, it's not like that once you've actually eaten it. So it slips down, doesn't coat your mouth in a disgusting way. And a really good flavor. What I'm finding super unique about this dish as we get through the plate is its richness. It's incredibly rich and it's because the the fat content to meat it feels like the fat content is quite high. I think normally if you have say a leg of lamb you get a whole slice of meat with just a little bit of fat on top and a lot of the fat's being trimmed. But because this is literally the entire head you've got real pockets of fat tucked all in through the meaty bits and so it makes for an incredibly rich experience and it is super good. It's really good. Mm. It's so well cooked. It's, it's a brilliant dish. <laughs> Experience. After we finished eating our roasted sheep's head, we just sat in the butcher shop having tea and chatting to the owners of the shop. People here in Turkey are so friendly. It's so one of the friendly. reasons why we love this place so much. Next stop, we are heading for some traditional Turkish milk puddings. Oh, yes. <laughs> This restaurant is a Loktanzi, which is a simple tradesman restaurant. They specialize in serving sort of home style cooked savory meals. But this Loktanzi is really famous for its puddings. They've been producing puddings um, since the 1960s and this place is really popular with the locals. We have ordered two of our favorite Turkish milk puddings. So this one here is called Tazandebi and it is a milk pudding that has also got a really unique ingredient and that is chicken. Yes, it is a milk and chicken pudding. Um, this one here is called Sutlach and it is a milk rice pudding. You can see underneath that leathery skin on the top that is really, really wobbly. That should be really good. And then to wash it all down, we've got um, some cups of chai, so tea. I'm just gonna pop my sugar in the tea because the tea here is um, quite strong and it can be a little bit bitter if you don't add the sugar. Tea is just the thing that everyone drinks at all hours of the day. You just sit on the street corner, drink a cup of tea. It's a great way to while away the time. I've got to get into this Kazan Debi. This is one of my favorite Turkish desserts. So the use of chicken actually harks back to the Ottoman times. It was very common to use a chicken in puddings um, together with corn flour and that's like how they would have their pudding. Um, Kazan Debi has got this beautiful um, burnt burnished crust, crust I should say on the top because it means um, bottom of the pan that's what Kazan Debi translates to and what they do is they actually light the pan on fire um, and then the sugars in the milk and whatnot creates that beautiful color. Look at that wobbly mouthful. Mmm, oh, it's beautiful, it's a great texture, it's very thick, super creamy and that um, burnished top 
It's a little bit smoky. It adds a really great depth to the dish. He also sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon over the top, so you've got that beautiful earthy flavor coming through to have a sip of my tea. Oh, tea in Turkey is nothing like it. So you can see the chicken fibers in the Kazandevi if you look really, really close, but you can't taste the chicken. It doesn't have a chicken flavor. Mm. It's got such a great texture. It's very, very thick and almost stretchy. And the milkiness of it is just sensational. All right, time to try this soot latch. So you can see this leathery skin that's formed on the top from the milk, and then it's sort of been scorched a bit, and then again, a lot of cinnamon over the top. So let's just dig in. Whoa, look at that. Oh my goodness, it is so creamy looking. All right, and quite watery. Mm. Mm. Not watery. It's just runny because it is so, so creamy. You get little uh, tender grains of rice in there. It's not overly sweet, which is great. Oh, this is just nothing like a really simple milk pudding. Next up, we're having a very classic Turkish thing, and this this meal sort of sums up our style of videos, I guess. We're not all about um, big things just because they're expensive or just because they're huge. We're about the true local food, the stuff the locals are really eating. Mm. So now we're having a meze experience, which is a very cool local thing to do here in Istanbul. It's probably one of our favorite ways to eat here. It's a quintessential Turkish dining experience. Meze is where you graze on a number of small plates, both hot and cold, and you drink. I think this is us. So meze is a very neat meal where you order lots of little things. Um, often the cold stuff comes first and then the hot stuff comes later, so it can be a long, slow meal, which is great. We love this place because it's got all this brilliant outdoor seating. So you're in this lovely laneway, everyone's sitting outside. It's really warm here at this time of year. It's um, September, so it's a lovely time to be here, sitting outside, dining our fresco. So we're just looking at the menu and deciding what to get. There's so much choice. I don't know what we're going to do. It's going to be impossible. Um, and the achalet is so good. Um, the oyster mushrooms. This here is raka, and you have to drink. It's basically mandatory to drink raka when you're eating meze. It's a spirit, and it's basically the national spirit. It's uh, an aniseed flavor, so it tastes like black jelly beans. What you do is, you pour yourself a little bit of raka, you pour your dining companion a bit of raka, and then you pour or top it up with water, and it actually does something very, very cool. All right, let me just get into this water and you'll see, look, it changes color. So it turns into like a cloudy mixture and it's best with ice. So I'm just gonna uh, give Thomas a bit of ice here. Now we've got our cold meze uh, dishes to start. So we ordered a number of things. We've got some oyster mushroom. This here is a um, red pepper dip. There's a bit of, um, parsley, some onions, some dill I think in there. This here is the perfect combo. This is kavun, which is melon, and bayaz paneer, which is a hard cheese. It's quite tangy, and they go together perfectly. This here is um, marinated sea bass. We've never tried this one, but it looks quite interesting. It's got some sort of yellow sauce over the top. Usually your cold dishes arrive first and then your hot food comes later, but we've been really slow in filming and we've actually got everything all at once. So we also ordered some Hamzi shish. So Hamzi are anchovies and it is anchovy season right now in Istanbul. And so they've been cooked on the grill on a skewer, just slipped off the skewer and they look incredible. And the staff also brought over a couple of other um, dishes 
just on the house. So this looks like some sort of cheese dip with some nuts in it. And then this is a red cabbage and I think maybe a silver beet dip. This all looks really, really good. Wow. They are being super kind to us here. So they've just given us one of the more beautiful dishes I've ever seen. So look at this dish. It is covered in pomegranate seeds. That's the beautiful pink seeds. It's got some massive bits of walnut on there, a lot of parsley, and it looks like it's been drizzled with pomegranate molasses. That's gonna be amazing. There's also something, it's like puff rice or something in there. I'm not sure what that is. But I'm starting with the hot food. So I've got the hamzi. So these are the, the anchovies. And we're really lucky that while we're here, it's anchovy season. So these little guys are in season. So you can see it's a whole fish. So they're cooked on a skewer. They've just got some um, herbs on them and they'll just be chucked on the grill. So let's get a bunch of anchovies. Oh my god. Oh, wow. That is incredibly well cooked fish. It's super juicy inside, so it bursts with juice. It's the most stunning flavor. Sometimes anchovies get a bad name because we often think of them um, in a jar, salted. But these are just fresh anchovies, so they're just a beautiful white fish. That is so good. Now I want to try this this salad actually that we just got. So this pomegranate salad with the walnuts in it. Let's get a nice big spoon of that. Look how much parsley there is. Oh man. Mm. Mm. Wow, that is good. So it's a flat leaf parsley, which is incredibly flavoursome. Those um, pomegranate seeds just pop with a beautiful sweetness and juiciness. Uh, a little bit of crunch from the walnuts. And I'm still not actually sure what that other ingredient is. It might be little bits of bul um, bulgur, which is a wheat product. And then it's got pomegranate molasses on, so that's really tangy. That is incredibly good. seems like a boring combo. Melon and just some white cheese, but I'm telling you that I've become addicted to this meze dish since we arrived. It is insane. All right, so I've got a bite of melon, a bite of the cheese. Mm. It is seriously a match made in heaven. The pavon on the melon, this with sweetness, it is so juicy. And then you have the cheese, which is very tangy and salty, and it's really intense. It's just the perfect combination. I love this style of eating. You can just pick away because everything's, um, apart from the hamzi, is, is cold. So it doesn't matter about time. You just sit, slowly pick away, drink your raka. I'm going to try the oyster mushrooms. Oh, oh they are incredible. Wow, they're good. I think they're cooked down with a lot of onions. They're really, really sweet. And the mushroom is perfectly cooked. It's got a little bit of bite, hasn't turned to mush. A little bit of raka. Oh, that is such a good alcohol. So if you like aniseed flavor or think um, black jelly beans, it's a really strong um, in aniseed. It's <laughs> so good. This is such a great way to eat. Thomas and I are just going to get into the raka and get into all of this delicious meze. If there is a particular dish that we didn't talk about, like that marinated fish, which was that you really want to know more about, let us know in the comments. This has been such a great day of eating in Istanbul. The food culture here is phenomenal. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Curb. <laughs>